today, we have release info on Intel's ARC GPUs, first gaming review of the 13,600K and 13,700K, GPU prices are even lower, RX 7000 release, and NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Ti is a monster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like Intel is beginning to accept the disaster that is their ARC GPUs. In a news story from the very trustworthy leaker Igor's lab, Intel has begun to internally discuss the time frame for their ARC GPU launch. Specifically, he claims that Intel is set to gradually launch the GPUs between August 5th and September 29th. What's really wild is that according to him, the internal documents don't discuss a large-scale launch, meaning Intel may be planning to do a small release and only give out a few samples to reviewers, etc. In fact, Igor claims that Intel will likely handpick media outlets, especially given board partners were briefed on how to handle their own products. This is basically all done to minimize negative reviews. As he stated, objective reviews will likely only release once the cards are out. Basically, Intel's ARC GPUs are looking like a very real failure. Of course, this is their first real attempt at this, so it's somewhat understandable. Hopefully, Intel will be better prepared with Battle Mage. But first, a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, Brilliant, the number one place I recommend if you want to learn the computer field or you just want to learn something new. Brilliant is incredible, and when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can try them out for free. So what makes Brilliant so special? Well, for one, their courses are made by experts in their field. I'm talking some of the brightest minds from MIT, Microsoft, Google, and more. These aren't random people who may not even know about the subject they're teaching. The second reason is because because they teach you by actually showing you, so you learn by doing it, instead of being fed boring lectures or having to memorize a bunch of things. Brilliant uses fun, interactive puzzles so you learn the actual concepts. Once again, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld to try it out for free. Plus, the first 200 of you who visit the link will get 20% off the annual premium, so there's no reason not to try. Next up for today, we have the first gaming review on a couple of Intel's upcoming 13th gen CPUs. This review was done by Extreme Player on Billy Billy, where he tested the i5-13600K and i7-13700K. Specifically, these are qualification samples which aren't the final release parts, but they're typically very close if not essentially the same, so they definitely give us a great idea of what to expect. Either way, when it comes to the review, he went over multiple games for each CPU and compared DDR4 to DDR5. And while he went over the details in multiple charts, one user actually shared an average of all the games to give us a quick look at how well next gen performs. And first up, when we look at the 13600K with DDR4, we can see that it gets between just 1.5 and 10% improvement in average FPS, with Full HD obviously being the highest. Remember that games are almost always going to be GPU bound, especially when you get into higher resolutions. That's why most reviews test CPUs at 1080p. One area that it certainly did get a jump in was minimum FPS. Here, even at 4K, the 13600K got over an 11% increase. Moving over to DDR5, we can see that things get a bit better, though not really enough to matter. We're talking just a couple percent or so, if anything. Moving on to the 13700K with DDR4, we see very similar numbers. Very decent minimum FPS boost with some average FPS boost and between 6 and 10% boost in maximum FPS. When we look at DDR5, we really don't see much of a difference at all. Some FPS goes up, but some actually goes down. Overall, Intel's next gen is looking like a decent boost in performance. Of course, as always, the real thing for gamers to look at is the GPU. And speaking of GPUs, it looks like my prediction was right, as prices are plummeting. This story comes from 3dcenter.org, who's been tracking GPU prices in Germany from the beginning of the shortage. And in his July 31st update, prices for Nvidia's RTX 3000 cards and AMD's RX 6000 cards have dropped even more. In fact, RX 6000 GPUs are now 14% below MSRP, and Nvidia's GPUs are 9% below MSRP. Of course, we know that next and GPUs likely aren't too far off, which I actually have an update on in a second, so if you'd rather wait, 
date, that's obviously understandable. With that said, if you've been in need of a new card since the shortage began, now is a great time to buy. In the end, it's obviously up to you. There are good reasons for whichever you pick, but regardless, it looks like the GPU shortage is finally over. Next up, while on the topic of next gen, we finally have a leak on the release date and specs for AMD's next gen RX 7000 GPUs. The story was originally shared by resident leaker Graymon55, where he states that the 7900 series of GPUs will get 20 gigabits per second memory, which is a nice boost over the rumored 18 gigabit per second that we heard of before. This could mean that AMD is working to make their next gen GPUs even more powerful, and that's understandable given what we're hearing about Nvidia's RTX 4000 cards. Not only that, but Graymon55 stated that Navi 31, meaning the higher end RX 7000 GPUs like the 7900 XT, 7800 XT, etc., are set for release in November. And of course, AMD already confirmed that next gen cards are going to be released this year. And given the RX 6000 cards released in November 2020, it makes perfect sense. Whether or not they can compete with Nvidia will be tough to say. Regardless, I'm excited especially given today's final story. In a new post from resident leaker Copite7Kimmy, who's been going over RTX 4000 leaks for quite a while now, he discussed the 8104 GPU. For those who don't know, 8104 should make up NVIDIA's RTX 4070, 4070 Ti, etc. Now, this specifically refers to the full 8104, and if NVIDIA goes by the same naming as this gen, that would be the 4070 Ti. This one apparently comes with a whopping 400 watt limit. Now, before you freak out, I highly doubt that's TDP. 400 watts is likely the absolute max that it's allowed to draw. Still, that's definitely high. Next, he claims that the full 8104 comes with a whopping 7,680 cores and 12 gigabytes of 21 gigabit per second memory. Finally, according to this leak, the full 8104 can match NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Ti, meaning just like what we recently saw, NVIDIA's next gen looks to be two full SKUs above their current gen, so we really could be looking at nearly a two times performance increase from the 3000 series to 4000 series. And of course, while performance is definitely really interesting, the big question will come down to price. So while that does it for today, who do you think will win with next gen, AMD or Nvidia? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out brilliant.org slash gamermail. And as always, have a great day.